Well, hi, friends. How are you? Good. So some of you know who I am, but not everybody. My name is Todd Davidson. I'm the director of middle school ministry. So if you see me in the hallway, just give like the nice pageant wave. Here we can practice real quick. Pageant wave. Good, 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 good. You know, you don't move the arm, just the wrist. Okay. So I don't even know if you guys know this, but like there's like parents that watch in on this, right? Uh, so if you'll just turn and look and say, hi, parents. Oh, hi, mom. I heard a hi, mom. Isn't that nice? Uh, so they watch in and they see what's going on so that they can have good discussions with you. Um, a little bit about me. I have been on staff here for about a year and a half. Um, I'm in charge of all middle schools, so 6th, 7th, 8th. Uh, and my family and I, we've been going here for about nine years. Um, before that, I was a youth minister over on the west side of Olathe. So I have been in youth ministry for like over 23 years, a long time. And I'm going to share a little bit of story later on uh, about that journey and how and why. I ended up in youth ministry. Um, So last week, uh, we talked about, like, relationships broken, correct? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, Correct. So we talked about that. So this week's going to be really interesting because we're going to move on from that. But I have some questions, and I need, like, like, ten people, like, to come up here. I I have some questions for you. So I heard a a yo red shirt over there. Come on up. Anybody here in the middle? Right there, yeah. Is that Cole? Come Get up here, Cole. Come on. Come on, uh, come on, somebody from this side. Is this like girls and guys, like girls over here and guys over here? Okay, come on up, there you go. Who is it? In the red shirt there, good. Who else? Anybody else? There you go, come on, Ryan. Here, come on up on stage. You can come up here, it's good, it's good, it's good. Uh, Dan, come on up here, Dan, good, good. All right, that should cover it, that should be good. That should be good. All right, so line up here, here we go. We got one more? All right. All right, good. Uh, So I want you to tell me your name, and here's the question. Like a rule, a rule that your parents give you, like something that's really hard to like live up to, okay? So like making your bed every morning or like, you know, for guys, it's like showering every day. It's hard for guys, right? Uh, So just like your name and like a rule your parents has given you that's really hard. Okay, I'm Lainey. One rule is that I have to have my phone out of my room by 9 o'clock. Yeah, anybody else? Phone out of your room by a certain time? Yeah, a few of them. Good, good. Ryan, what you got? Uh, my name is Ryan, and uh, I have to keep my room clean. Keep your room clean. Anybody struggle with room clean? No, it's not. Oh, there's a few girls. Okay, guys, okay, yeah. Cole. Cole, you're looking nice today, man. Shirt. I'm getting baptized. Yes, baptism for Cole today. All right, go for it. Uh, well, I'm Cole, and uh, what's probably really hard is I have to, like, ride my bike for a certain amount of time every day because huh? I'm forced to. Yeah, that is an interesting one. That's, that's an odd one, yeah? Your name and the uh, rule? Um, I'm Luke, and uh, one rule that's really hard is that I have to try not to kill my brother. True, thou shalt not kill. We've talked about that one. Yeah, good, good. Dan? Uh, I'm Dan. get good grades. Good grades. That's a hard one. Dude, it's so hard. It is a hard one. <laughs> I never really got good grades. I was kind of just like a C student. Okay. My name's Olivia, and I'm not allowed to have, like, any technology upstairs. No technology. Not just bedroom, but, like, upstairs <laughs> at all. All right. Well, we give our friends a nice, brave round of applause. Good. Have a seat there. Well done. It takes a lot to get up here and a couple, a couple hundred people and share that. And so why do we do that? Like, why do we talk about these rules? One, because I saw a lot of you doing this. Like, yeah, I got to clean my room. And yeah, I got to get good grades. And yeah, I can't kill my sibling. You know, like that's not. Um, but like in the Old Testament, there was like a lot of really weird rules. Uh, so I just looked up a few. Like there was one that like uh, like about chopping off hands. Like that's uh, or it's like killing people. You can't chop off hands. Um, one that's weird is like you can't mix like fibers like linen and wool. They weren't allowed to do that in the Old Testament. Um, don't uh, sit where a menstruating woman has sat. Like um, and then never. I don't know where this one came from. Never boil a baby goat in its mother's milk. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and finally, number five, um, don't, don't eat owls, like the bird, like the owls, like, whoo, you're not allowed to eat owls. So like weird, weird rules. And there's like, there's just lists upon lists of weird rules in the Bible. And so 
Todd, why in the world are we talking about these weird rules? Have you guys heard this term covenant? Okay, and a covenant is a promise. And so God had made a promise to God's people, specifically the Jewish people. And all these rules were like really, really, really hard to live up to. Like, I would even say like impossible to live up to. And so over and over, the Jewish people were trying to make themselves right with God, and then they'd fail again, and then make right again, they'd fail again, and they really, really struggled. So God decided to make a new covenant. And this covenant came in the form of his son, Jesus. And so uh, I, Shannon said the other day, when I saw her earlier, she goes, every week we get up here and we say, hey, uh, what are we going to talk about? And someone in the crowd goes, oh, Jesus, right? Anybody, like, and they're, they're, like, in a class, and the teacher asks a really hard question, and they're like, hey, uh, can you tell me this answer? And you're just like, you have no idea what the answer is, and you're just like, uh, Jesus? Like, that's, like, uh, that's our church answer all the time, right, is Jesus. Uh, but this is a new covenant, Jesus, God with us, like, this human form of God with us. And so, like, John three sixteen, you guys have seen this in sports stadiums. Like, they hold this up. Do we have that scripture to go up there? John three sixteen, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. And it goes into this fancy word, like this God on earth, like fully uh, fully human and fully divine, this word called incarnation. Anybody heard that word before? Incarnation. So God came in the world as Jesus, fully human and fully divine. And all of you guys know this, but, like, this is something that, like, completely separates us as, like, a faith, as a people of faith, a people of religion, that our God sent his son to be God and fully human. Like, that's something that's really unique about Christianity. And so the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. There's a translation where it says that, like, and God moved into the neighborhood, which means that, like, God was there. Like, he was near us, very good at us. So this stuff uh, makes us really excited, and we should be really excited about this. Like, we should be, like, this excited. I'm sure you guys know this clip here. We should be this excited. Together, we're going to yell Jesus, like Elf did, right? But not instead of Santa, all right? So you got deep breath. Like you got to have like your biggest, your biggest. I'm going to put the mic down because I'm going to be really loud. So on three, right, this is going to be like Elf Jesus. We're so excited that he's here. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Yes! I know that guy. I know that guy. I know that guy. Now, now. If you were walking around your school and somebody was like, hey, man, uh, Jesus, and you were like, Jesus! Jesus! Like, yeah, okay, it get a little weird, right? It get a little weird. But this is the energy with what God is expecting out of this new covenant. Like he has sent his son to be with us and to show us how to live and be like God. All right, so... You guys already know a little bit about Jesus. You guys have read about this all the time. So do we have, do we have the Apostles' Creed on there? It says, And in Jesus, holy, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come, the judge of the living and the dead. Okay, so... He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, we're going to get into resurrection. We're going to get on that stuff. But today, we're going to just talk about Jesus. Jesus here on earth and what he was. And there's all kinds of great stories about Jesus. Some of my favorites is like when Jesus was young, his parents actually like lost him. <laughs> and it reminds me of this story. Like, uh, so my wife and I, we have two kids. Uh, they're like middle school, high school now. But I remember we showed up to church one day. I had a photo shoot early Sunday morning. And my wife is a dentist, and she got called into emergency. And we both thought each of us, like, had the kids. And so it was actually in this room, and, we were, like, we snuck in. We were sitting in the back row here. And she's sitting down, and I sneak in, and I'm like, hey, uh, sir, are the kids, like, in Sunday school? She's like, no. 
no, I thought the kids were with you. I'm like, I thought the kids were with you. And I mean, they were like third grade and first grade. And come to find out, like, we had uh, both left our kids uh, at home on a Sunday morning. And so we ran out and we called them on the phone. And uh, they were playing Wii. Uh, they actually had no idea we had left. Like, they had no idea. They, they were just, like, staring at the TV. And everything was fine. I was like, okay, stay exactly where you are. And we'll be home to get you. And as we're running out, like the pastor is walking by, like, hey, is everything okay? We're like, oh, yeah, everything's okay. And in their, like, wonderful pastoral way, they're like, are you sure? You seem stressed. I'll be like, we're a little stressed. We just left our kids at home, right? So we had to, like, run home and get our kids. Like, this happens to Jesus. Like, they're at this big religious thing, and they go to head back to their village, and they left Jesus behind. Literally, like, they turned to each other at one point. They're like, hey, do you got Jesus? Like, Do you have Jesus? I don't know where Jesus is. They left him behind. And when they came and they found him, he was sitting at the feet of the religious people, like learning and teaching. Like how crazy is this, like as a wee guy? Like, and so that you don't hear a lot about Jesus as a teenager, which would have been really helpful in youth ministry. Like, if they could have just written a whole chapter about, like, Jesus as a teenager, and we could have realized that he messed up too. And so we don't have to feel all guilty all the time, like when we're middle school and high school, but they didn't do that. So we have to, we have to assume a lot. So here's the thing. Quite often we debate about, like, a lot of things Jesus does, but there's also a debate about, like, what Jesus looks like. Like, is he a white guy with, like, a beard and wearing, like, Birkenstocks all the time? Anybody got that image in their head that, like, Jesus is, like, wearing Birkenstocks and he has long hair and a beard? It's okay to think that. I mean, like, that's the, but here's, here's what I actually think Jesus looked like. Like, I imagine Thor, right? Like, he's got, like, a big hammer and he can, like, shoot lightning out of his eyes and stuff. And I, I imagine Thor. And actually, like, if you were to, like, look back and think what the Jewish people's expectations of what Jesus was, this is it. I mean, not Thor, not like a Marvel character, right? But they believed that the Savior was going to come and destroy all of their enemies. In fact, I mean, this is kind of what I think, this is what I think Jesus would have been like if the Jews would have, like, got what they wanted. Do we have that clip of Thor? So the Jewish people, yeah, you can clap. I mean, Thor is pretty awesome. But Jesus is pretty awesome as well. And here's the thing. Like, this is the hope that Jesus was going to come and he was going to free the Jewish people from oppression. And God turned the tables. The, The Savior that he sent, the Son that he sent, wasn't any of this. Like, he didn't come riding a white horse ready to, like, cut down all the oppressors of the Jewish people. He was very different than that. Now, Jesus was very powerful. Um, He did a lot of different things. He healed people. He healed people with skin disease. He healed paralyzed people. He healed blind people. I mean, there's tons of stories of miracles that Jesus did. And open up the New Testament, and it's just, like, story after story after story of all this wild stuff that Jesus did in God's name. He actually even raised people from the dead. Now, this is powerful, like just as powerful as like what Thor was doing, but in a very different way, right? It wasn't this war that Jesus was bringing down. It was this love that Jesus was bringing. He goes on to cast out demons. He walks on water. He calms the storm, like all these amazing things. And we can talk about those things, and they're really cool. But this isn't the Jesus that like grabbed my heart. Like, there's moments of, like, strife. There's moments of turmoil in your life when someone that you love or even yourself is sick or you're going through hard things. And there are prayers to Jesus of, like, please help me through this. Please help me in this really hard time. But I'd love to share with you, like, how God captured my heart. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. I don't know who's over here, but I super appreciate you. Um, So I grew up in the church. I did confirmation just like you, a small, smaller Methodist church in Olathe. And, I mean, I did all the things. Like, mom and dad made me do confirmation, and I did it. And I was like, yeah, I'll join the church. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Um, and I had a great friend community that we, that we were part of there. And the cool thing about it, as much like you guys are experiencing, is it wasn't just people that were in my school. It was, like, people from all over the community. So I got to meet a lot of new people. 
We did mission trips. We did retreats. These were all super powerful experiences for me. Um, but when I went to college, it was a really hard time. That community that I had built, I decided to go to a school without any of those people, and I really struggled. In fact, I only lasted a year in traditional college. I came back home. I started working jobs. Um, and at some point, my now mother-in-law, who was part of the church I grew up in, like, sold me out to the new youth pastor and goes, hey, there's this guy that really doesn't have anything to do uh, that would love, that you should really, like, rope into youth ministry. And so he invites me to come along, and uh, I start helping weekly things, and it's fine. Like, I feel like I'm important. I'm doing something. But then there's this mission trip, and for us, it was 7th, 8th, and ninth graders, and we were going to go to Des Moines, Iowa. And I was like, why in the world Des Moines, Iowa? So here's this group of kids. Uh, these are 7th, 8th, and ninth graders. This is like 96, I believe. Um, and so smaller mission trip, about a dozen of us. But here's what happened on this mission trip. These young students, your age, absolutely changed my heart for Jesus. Because as we would go out and serve in these different mission places, they had no fear. They would hop in and they would help. They would love people that were in tragedy and in crisis. And they would love each other and take care of each other. The crazy thing about this trip is... This is really the first time that I remember um, any students that were, like, on the diagnosis spectrum of, like, ADHD or ADD. And there was a, a, a few kids on this trip that were taking meds that I had never heard of before. Like, this was new to me. But I specifically remember as these students were struggling on the trip that all the rest of them just loved the snot out of them. They took care of them. They helped them along. They realized that they were struggling in places. They worshiped like I had never seen young people worship before. And here's the thing. You know who the worship leader was? This guy. You know who learned how to play guitar two weeks before he went on a mission trip? This guy. I literally know only knew four guitar chords, which limited me to like three songs that we could actually sing and play. And we sung and played those over and over and over and over and those students in my awful singing and my terrible guitar playing loved it. And they loved me. And they showed me that I had a place in the world to impact people in the name of Jesus. I literally came back from this trip with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders as a different person. My now wife, we were dating at the time, and uh, you'll hear about this in the Bible she looked at me, and she was like, you are different. You are changed. Dare I say, like, you're even, like, glowing, which is kind of a weird term in today's day and age, right? But she, someone who knew me for decades, well, in decades, 15 years, saw that I was a different person. And it was because God spoke through middle school students and showed me the way that we are supposed to love each other and love the world. So here's something crazy. Here's the next photo. Eight years later, I'm leading pretty much the same crew on a Mexico mission trip. So we go down, we go across the border, and we're at a little Mexican restaurant here having tacos and bottled Mexican Coke, having a great time. And uh, see the guy that's leaning right in the middle there, like uh, with the big smile? His name's James. James and I are still super close. In fact, I was asleep already, but like at 11.30 last night, he called me because he lives in Portland now. So like, he doesn't care what time it is in Kansas. But he calls me, and the message he leaves is like he's in tears. He's having a really tough time. But the relationship that we bonded over of people of faith 23 years ago still matters. It still means something. Like we're in each other's life. Because we served together, we loved other people together, and we put ourselves out there in courage and bravery because we were trying to be like Jesus. We hear over and over and over that, like, I mean, yeah, Jesus spoke to big crowds, but that wasn't his thing. We hear about the disciples that he hung out. We hear about the community he was. And we hear about how often he stopped for the people that were in need. 
There would be moments where Jesus was like walking around and massive crowds were following him and trying to like get his attention and get his affection. But the one that Jesus would stop for would be the one that were like on their knees and like would touch just the edge of their cloak to see if a little bit of Jesus would rub off on them. Jesus was also a, a disciple, or a, a rabbi, I'm sorry, a rabbi. And what you guys have heard is that rabbi is a word for teacher. And the definition of teacher, specifically in Jewish times, rabbi, was that you would have a group of people that followed you really closely. And there's like this slang language that talks about, may I follow you, rabbi, so close that the dust of your sandals is caked upon me. Some of you guys have like seen that, like if you're following a truck, right, that had just like come out of mud and it's just like throwing junk all over you. The students of these rabbis, specifically the students of Jesus, wanted to be so close to him that the gunk that Jesus had walked through would cake them. They wanted to know so much about Jesus. Sorry, Bruce. So my hope in your journey in confirmation is that this spark of love for Jesus and for the community that Jesus wishes for ignites in you. And many of you are like, man, I'm only here because, like, my mom or dad, like, said I had to be here. Some of you I've heard from you, like, my grandparents, this is something like my grandparents are making me do. But my hope that in this process of coming here every week and building rhythms and going doing service projects together is that you learn that the Jesus that we love is not a Jesus of, like, big hurrahs, right? It's not the Jesus of Thor coming through and, like, lighting everybody up with lightning. That Jesus wants a personal relationship with you. And this is why God sent him, to be fully human and fully divine, to be fully connected with us, and not this God that we can't see or touch or understand. And here's the problem with our generation right now, and I include myself in this. It, is, it, been, it has been such a long time since God walked on this earth that it's really hard to believe. Would you guys agree with that? Like if Jesus was here right now and his 12 disciples were there, I'd be like, man, I'm in. Like I want to be one of you. I want to follow you. I want to see these miracles. I want to see you turn like a little bit of food into a whole lot of food and feed all of us right now. Let's have a party, Jesus, right now. That would be really easy. But now it's really hard because just like I don't get to see Jesus. But here's the thing. You do. Just like I saw Jesus and middle school students. You guys get to see the love of Jesus in each other, in your leaders that have given up months of their time to be here, and the staff that are here that love you so much. We get to be Jesus to each other. And that's why God sent them, so that we can see what it means to interact with each other here on earth, to love each other unconditionally. So you're going to process this way more. You're going to hear about the resurrection. You're going to hear about life everlasting. You're going to hear all those things. But I want to make sure that this week you pause and you realize that God is fully human and fully divine. And we get to be that to each other. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so gracious for your love and your peace and your patience and your kindness. And Lord, for your power that you can do things that are unexplainable. And Lord, we rejoice that you sent your son Jesus for us so that we can see what it means to be God here on earth and we can do our best to love each other like Jesus loved us. Lord, be with these students as they wrestle with these things. Be with these teachers. Speak through them and encourage them. And Lord, may we be your community. In your name we pray. Amen.